Okay, we want to dive a little bit deeper, understand the mathematical model which sits behind those occupancy grid maps, and we'll discuss how we can derive such occupancy grid maps from um, real-world sensor data. So first of all, why should we care about maps? Uh, maps are needed for a wide range of robotics applications. So whenever you have a system which should navigate through the environment, um, and it shouldn't do that in a random fashion, then robots often use some type of internal map representation. Um, those map representations are needed for tasks such as localization, so in order to determine where you are given a map of the environment, or for planning a path. So if a robot is at a current location and wants to drive towards a target location, then the robot needs to have a map of the environment in order to plan an optimal or near optimal plan. You may just go tell the robot drive towards the target location, maybe the system will be lucky and reach this target location, but if there's an obstacle in between, um, the system may get stuck. idea if you want to have an efficient navigation system. So the, the map represents the environment for the robot. So all, everything that the robot understands about the environment is typically stored in that. They tell us what the environment looks like. This can be occupancy information, so where is an obstacle, where is free space. This could be the location of distinct points in the environment, so-called uh, features or landmarks. Um, but this could also be um, something else. This could also be semantic information, just as what is actually there stored in the environment. But this depends on our application. For today, we will look into occupancy information, so which part of the environment is free and which part of the environment is occupied. And so the task of learning those maps from sensor data is a fundamental task in most robot navigation systems. Because even if you provide the robot beforehand with a map, the possibility that the environment changes or um, that something needs to be updated in the map is actually pretty high. So systems need to be able to, on the one side, determine if the map representation that they are using is still up to date, and if not, update the map of the environment. And this happens typically based on sensor data. So what types of sensors are we looking into? Um, I've shown here a few popular sensors that you find on a lot of mobile robots. This can be uh, monocular cameras, stereo cameras, or RGBD cameras, or maybe laser range finders um, in 2D or in 3D. And we will be looking here today into sensors which provide me proximity information. So this could be a laser range scanner, but this could also be um, a stereo camera or an RGBD camera, maybe not necessarily the uh, monocular camera, although there are approaches today which try to estimate the depth information also from a monocular camera. Um, so our assumption here today will be basically that we have a range sensor and we do two small examples um, with that one with um, a laser scanner, something like this over here. So we will look into the question on how presentation and volumetric map representations. So feature map representations basically store the location of distinct points in the environment. So there's an example here of Victoria Park in Sydney where tree trunks could be or are one type of landmark that the system uses in order to estimate this landmark map, so a map of trees, and when they are, uh, you can use then this map representation in order to localize in the environment. Um, we are not looking into feature-based representations today. We will look into volumetric representations. This can be in 2D, this type of floor plan map that we see over here, or we could even extend it to 3D and then store a full volumetric model of the environment. And again, um, they are both different types of representations. We can use both, for example, for localizing a robot in the environment, um, Given that we, or we here often want to plan a path through the environment, I feel that this Occupancy grid-based representation are more suited because they explicitly represent free space and we can use them um, in order to plan a path through the free space uh, and therefore they are preferable in several applications. So today we will be looking into these type of um, occupancy grid maps. How does a robot look like that could build um, such a map? So this is a simple example. It's one of the platforms that we have in the lab, a U-Bot, which is equipped with two of these um, horizontally looking uh, 2D laser range finders, these Hokuyu range finders, and they can drive through the environment. And a very simple occupancy grid map could look like this. So what you see here is basically
And this is an example. map out of that. data um the 